we got a tweet in the other day talking about football boots. They asked us specifically to talk about the Copa boot. Andy McGiddy sent that tweet in to off the ball. So we're going to be doing a, uh, we're going to be doing a bit of a, a segment on that over the next couple of weeks, talking about our favourite boots, talking about the individual boots, the iconic players that wore them and why we love them. First of all, I want to introduce that segment. Colin Buig is going to be doing it with me. Colin, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm not so bad. Oh, good. Before we get into the specific boots, we wanted to just talk broadly about football yeah. boots and why we love them. Why do we love them? You like it brought a smile to my face when you asked me about this segment, and I saw that tweet and you sent it to me. Because it just it just reminds you of uh, well, it reminds me of like childhood into adolescence when you start becoming much more aware of what you're wearing and and the preparation that goes into a match. And I guess when you see certain boots that we're looking back on, both of us like from our respective times, it just immediately brings you back to what team you played for locally, and in some cases like the type of goals you might have scored or the matches that you played in wearing certain boots yeah. and like when we played in, in Cork like wearing tape around the socks became a huge thing as well so you'd, wear, you'd have the tape and boot combination and the, the biggest thing for me the morning of matches was like whatever anything else but my own personal preparation the boots had to be sparkling or as yeah. near to as possible and you get like a J cloth from the kitchen ruin it by just clearing off all my the mud. My mum used to go crazy Mental. with me because uh, do you, I always use the best cloth Mothers have no respect for the boots, like. No, we don't. have too much respect for them. Uh, it, night, night before would have been my routine. Get oh, the I did it night before, but then in the morning off, I thought I'd have a look and see what the, how did they go overnight. When you think about time. it, it makes absolutely None. no sense. Because, what, you're like five minutes into the game, and like the vast majority of matches played on this island, you're going to be destroyed pitches. after five minutes. Well, like. well, you see, that's the thing that annoyed my mum the most, is that I was, cl I was cleaning the studs. Underneath the boot had to be sparkling yeah, as well. Yeah. If there was a, a single but drop of muck in it, it made no sense. That was the stupidest part. Underneath the boot, because you look at it, you'd be like, oh, look at this, it's class. And then you see, you get the odd glancing eye in the dressing room then when it came to getting the boots out. But there was never, I don't know about yourself, but there was never any direct comment about either for or against a type of boot that a player wore. But there was, there was just unspoken... Uh, Unspoken looks, kind of telepathic, like depending on who the person was. I think you knew by the them. player and what kind of player they were, what kind of boots they were going to be wearing. Were you ever surprised about a, a certain player wore a certain boot on your own football team? Being like, you'd have like a centre half wearing vapours. Like, no, vapors, be, well, like, you oh, see, don't like the look of that. that. That actually annoyed me. I don't like the look. I don't trust I, it. If I saw a centre half wearing a pair of, uh, I'd say I did. I played on a team where the centre half wore pink mercurial boots. And I, d I wasn't a fan of it because he tried to do, you know, the whole David Louise thing with the... the was uh, that the first kicks. time that he David Louise... He fancied himself a little bit. Yeah, was that when he first arrived, David Louise, to Chelsea? First time around? Because he was this kind of novelty centre-half yeah. option. Like, there's, there's calamitous centre-halves centre everywhere now. Like, But yeah. at that time, it was kind of... Yeah, it was a novelty. But they are, like, centre-half wearing pink vapours, you'd want to be good. See, you want to be very good. You, want to have, you have confidence going up against that as a striker. Whereas if you're a, a winger wearing pink vapours, like a winger statistically is going to lose the ball a lot. You see, here's the thing about a winger wearing pink vapours. If he is, it automatically tar leaves him as a target man. Because oh, yeah, well, in, in Irish football in general, <laughs> especially Saturday League, if you see someone wearing pink boots or boots that stand out in general, you're going to think he's a bit soft. Yeah, but you asked me before this is like we want to talk about like what boots mean to us and why they're not as good anymore and that's the reason right because everybody wears colourful boots now like yeah. it's, it's, it's now a novelty to wear black boots well yeah all black boots see that's what's interesting that's how much is that when I, it was around about um, probably under under 18s under 19s when the all black boots started to come in as a, a bit of a trend again yeah. and now everybody wears the all black boots with the sock I've, I've, oh, yeah, the I think I have three yeah. pairs myself. Do you? Yeah. You three pairs of boots? Yeah. For what? Why? Well, By see, accident or by design? Uh, a bit of both. Like, I, I, I bought a pair of, I have a pair of Copa 90s. Uh, they're black with the Adidas, is a bit of a blue going through them. They're a very nice boot. Oh, yeah. I wear them, they're studs. Then I have two pairs of uh, the Mercurial Vapors. Uh, one has a bit of a a texture on them and the other one doesn't. Mm. I got the second pair of those. Like so one of them I, I I have two pairs of boots, one's are studs and one's are blades, basically for different types of yeah, weather. But then my brother in law bought himself a pair of the exact same boots but they were a wee bit too small for him. So he gave them to me. So I ended up with ended up with three pairs of boots. What size are you? I'm a nine. You see that's a good size to be like you're gonna get a lot of boots that way. Yeah. Eleven like it's, it's no good. 
Eleven is very big. I, it, it, no, for a pair of boots. Popular or size? No, it's size. Size, size one, exactly. Because I was going to say it's not. They're not popular. Can you remember your first pair of boots? Um, yeah, I used to get a lot of knockoff predators when they first came out in the late nineties. Because my parents, there was no way they were giving me the money. Like, especially when you're uh, that age, when you're very young, because you're growing all the time. So it's pointless spending a lot of money. So I say it's more. Um, what's more kind of pertinent is like how can I remember the first time I spent a lot of money on boots and I do remember that it was the original F50s they came out about 15 years ago yep and um, so the original pair were the black with the yellow trim and I was obsessed with the Predator Manias that David Beckham wore in 2002 World Cup and the one with the, we're speaking off air the ones with the dragon on it the white yeah, ones I, but it was just the made the, there was the original black ones but then the cream sil slash yeah. silver ones with the red tongue Oh, they were unbelievable. And I was all said I had saved up loads of money to get them. And I was getting them on Pro Direct, is that boot, football boot website. And then at the 11th hour, Santi Canizares, remember him, the Valencia goalkeeper with bleached blonde hair? He wore these white and blue F50s in the UEFA Cup final. I think it was the one where Valencia played Marseille. It might have been Didier Drogba's last game for Marseille before he moved to Chelsea. And I remember watching that game and Canazares was wearing these boots. And that was at a time when I was obsessed with boots. Like, I knew every well-known player. I knew what boots they wore for about a year. Now, I haven't a clue now, but I used to then. And I remember seeing what Can Canazares is wearing from the widescreen shot on TV and be like, what are those boots? And of course, you couldn't look it up back then. And they zoomed in on them and I was like, oh my God, they're unbelievable. They're the, they're the F50s. But I had never seen that colour before. So one of my biggest regrets in life in life is that I didn't get the Predator Manias and I got those F50s instead because they were impossible to keep clean. They were impossible to keep clean. A lot of grooves. The side of them, yeah. yeah. People will remember F50s, um, very difficult. I benefited from quite a few hand-me-downs yeah. because I had cousins uh, who were just a tiny, tiny bit older than me, but like you said, they're growing super fast. But they were big into their football, so they were getting yeah. new, they were getting the new predators. I had a pair of, uh, do you know the? So you have your predators, but then they came out with like the reverse. So the black and red was the predators, and they came out with a red and black one. Yeah, a pair of those. The first pair of boots I bought, and I I remember this forever was when I was going up for trials um, oh. for the Donegal team. I was under fourteens, I think. So I wanted to have new boots for it, yeah. and it was the first time my mom allowed me to spend my own money on a new pair of boots. And I went into a shop, and Anthony Gorman, I'm not sure if you know of him, he's, he's a big football personality in Letterkenny. He used to play a, a League of Ireland football, he used to play across the water the odd time, and now his son, uh, Dale Gorman, he was playing for Stevenage, I'm not sure where he is now. Um, he owned a sports shop, and I went in, and the pair of boots I wanted were uh, 15 euro more expensive than I, I could afford. Yeah. And they were a pair of green. I, Aidan McGeady had them for Celtic at the time. A pair of green vapours. And Anthony Gorman said to me, oh, I hear you're going up to Donegal trials. Because he was involved in the kind of the selection. He was like, take them with you or you can pay me whenever you have the money. So he gave me, gave me the boots, allowed me to get, have them for the trials. And then I went in like a, maybe two months later and paid for, paid for the rest of them. How did you? Um, how how did he know you were going for trials? Because he was broadly involved in the selection. deal, would have been the same age as me as well, so he would have been up at the same trials, and uh, like he he would be well uh, connected. well connected with indoor golf football. So he never benefited from such generosity. Also, you see, it also helped that my uncle played for Finn Harps. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. And people would know the sort of nephews who are playing, who are related to him. He's that big of a character from from, from Harp. So I, people knew me through my uncle, essentially. All right. Not that I'm well known. My uncle was very well known in Donegal. So uh, that was that was my first pair of boots that I bought myself. Um, and tell me, have you paid back the 15 euro? I have paid the last couple of months. Or, <laughs> no, no not, the, not the last couple of months. I paid it a couple of months after, uh, after I got them. Um, I don't know where we start with football bits. Where do you want to start? Will we start with Copa 90s? Will we start with the Kings, Puma Kings? Next week I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, tempos. I'd like, to, I personally like to start with Predator Manias, the 2002 ones, and the evolution of the Predator. And I actually, of the Adidas Predator, I, I, um, I actually think I only ever 
uh, owned one pair of them. Funnily enough, because of my love of them. But I, I, I'm still going back to that F50 thing as one of the biggest regrets ever, because I never actually owned the proper Predator Manias. But I think you have to start there, because there's so many people. Like, I know for a fact, when I told people back home about this segment, and when I will show them this segment, they'll be like, Predator's Manias, that's yeah. all they want to know. Well, the new Predator came out yeah, a saw. few weeks ago, and it's horrendous. Well, I don't know. If, are we saying it's horrendous because... We're so nostalgic about the boots from our time, even though your time is now still, but like my time is a while ago. And like for me, any boot nowadays, I'm like, ah, that's okay. Do you know what it is? Every player has the same boot. But you could have said you that have, back you, then. Like, but no, back then you had, I mean, Roy Keane was wearing Deodoras. Deodora, yeah, himself and uh, Gary Neville were like the like, only two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't all have these boot sponsorships. Like every four, every four player, you can, you can point them out. You're, there's an Adidas player, there's a Puma player. But it, it's because they're so colourful, all the boots now, and there there's so many different designs, and it, they're very expressive. You see, 10 or 15 years ago, you'd have the odd player, so we'll say 22 players in the pitch, maybe four, four or five of them would have colourful boots, and that, that would make you stand out, and you'd have a look at them, and you'd have, like, I remember the burned colour Nike uh, Mercurial Vapors around 2005-06, and I was like, they're unbelievable. Like, Gabby and Balnohar used to wear them for Aston Villa, and then you'd have... Olaf Melberg, his teammate centre back, would wear Puma Kings. But nowadays, those equivalent players would both have extremely bright, ankle high football boots. Yeah. That's why they don't stand out, because everyone's different and everyone's the same as a result. So, that's for me where football boots has been.